Okay, so your challenge for our modifiers is to make two towers. I did that here. Um, this is the Crane Communication Tower from Chicago, and this is the St. Mary X Tower from London, England. Um, I have those both saved in one file. You can have them in separate files. Okay, I um, have mine both turned on here in my Scene Explorer. And I'm going to just make sure that it's saved and that I want to label those as well because I need to find those later on when I go to import those into my original scene. So give them a name that you can find that you'll be able to identify them and click save. And then we are going to go back and open our, um, <laughs> see, we had our unit one assessment. Okay. That is the, if we're going to open up this. Okay. This is the cityscape that we had with the ball rolling through the scene, right? If we hit play and we are going to swap out a couple buildings here with with our towers. So you can pick out any buildings you want. First I'll do is I'll bring those into the scene. We'll make sure they're scaled and then you can just add them to the scene or delete anything out of here and kind of rearrange it so it makes sense. Having a few more realistic towers. How do we bring something into a scene that's modeled in a different world. That's best practice actually is to model things in a different space, save it and then bring them in because that way we don't risk messing up any of the, the original scene that we spent a lot of time on making. So I'm gonna go to file, okay, back in my menu here and I'm going to go to import. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna merge the objects that we um, did in our tower scene. Now I have to find those, so they're gonna be in my 3ds max work in my folder right and i had mine saved as my crane communication tower and saint mary's tower so when i select the file that i had saved those in it's going to ask me here which ones do i want to bring in okay if you only have one per file that's okay i can do one or i can hit sh uh, shift or control and highlight both of them okay I shouldn't have to mess with any of this. I want all of this to come in by default. Don't have to play with any of these. I never went into my scene and changed the sizes. But if you notice, these are a lot bigger than what I have. Now, when I import those into my scene, it wants to stick them onto our grid at zero, zero. While they're still highlighted, both of those are just coming into the scene. I'm gonna go up and grab my move tool just so that I can get them out of the middle of my my um, blocking everything. I'm going to grab my move tool, which is W, and we're going to slide this over to the left by grabbing just my X, that might be your Y, whatever, and just get them out of the way. Now, when I import those, if they look way too big for my scene, I'm going to turn my, my restore viewports on because it's going to show me here, okay, that they're here. I got them off to the side. That's fine. They're not even, they're already way taller than most of my buildings, and they're not even set at the plane. Um, I'm going to scale them, okay? So right now I have them selected with my move tool. <sighs> Let's go into our scale tool here. It's going to be this select and uniform scale. Okay, it's the small box with this other dash box around it. When I do that, it's going to give me some options. You'll notice here I can grab one, two, or three of my options X, Y, or Z to scale just um, the Y up. Okay, let's try it again. I can scale just the Y up or down. I can do just the X or I can do just the Y. Okay, I don't want to do that. I want to do all three of them together. So I'm going to go in the middle of this scale. I'm going to click and I'm going to start shrinking them down until visually they are about the right size for my scene. Does that make sense? Okay, in this front view now, do you remember we want to be able to line those up on 
our plane here on our XYZ coordinate plane. So right now, everything is attached to the center of these. Let's go in. I'm going to go back to my move tool. Let's go into my hierarchy tab and affect my pivot and object point. My object point lines up there, but I want to affect my pivot point here. Okay. Turn that on to the bottom. Just make sure that both of those see. I don't have to do anything. Um, but now with those selected, it snapped those to the bottom for me. Now I can move those up so that the bottom of my buildings stick to this plane. Now I have my snaps turned on. Uh, you can visually line those up if you want or however you want to do it. Um, in my perspective view here, I got to see which way the ball's rolling. Okay, ball is rolling down the street here. I got to find out where I want to put those in my scene. And I can do that in my top view here. Okay. Um, with the buildings that I have here. So I think I'm going to replace this pink building, which isn't that fantastic. I'm going to shut my my animation off. I'll take this pink building. I don't know which one it is. Here it is. And I'm going to delete it. And in that space, I'm going to click this building and I'm going to slide this over. You're going to do this visually for your own building. Okay. Now I also want to rotate it so that this is kind of fits in the block easier. So while I have that there, I'm going to go up to my rotation tool. I'm going to rotate. Now, uh, how I rotate, this gives me this uh, circular gizmo here. If I grab the red box, it's going to tip it this way. And I can go all different, any different angle on this rotation. I don't want to do that. Control Z. Up next to my snaps, I have angle snaps. Okay, and this is going to let me rotate by specific angles. I'm going to, I'm going to turn this on, but I want to set my angle. See, it looks like I only need to rotate this at a 45 degree angle, and it will fit perfectly in my block here. So I'm going to right click on here using my right button on my mouse. And right now it says that um, when I change my angles and this is turned on, it will snap to five degrees uh, at a time. I want to change that to 45. So I just want it to be exactly locked in at 45. I don't want to have any guesswork when I'm doing that. And I'm going to close this. I want to make sure this is highlighted in blue. My shape that I'm rotating, which is this uh, Chicago uh, building here. And I'm going to, I'm going to click on it again so I get my rotation. I want to rotate this ring here and just spin at 45 degrees. So I do that, and because I set it at 45 degree taper, it rotated it in at 45. So let's see how that looks here. When I zoom into my scene a little bit, okay, I can make this full size view here. I might have my scene tip down a little bit and have that roll off. And now I can see this is definitely part of my cityscape. Um, I also want to add this building in. I don't know where I want to add that. So let's see. This building's kind of blocking things. So maybe I can just shuffle things around. I can get this. Which one is that? That's this building here. Here's my pen tower. So I'm kind of thinking things backwards. I rotate this around. Um, let's rotate it so it matches our perspective view. Let's see. This building is this building here. Why don't we take and slide this building? I'm going to grab it and I'm going to slide it at the end of the block. Just bring it down here and get it out of the way. Okay. That opens up a room in the middle of my block here for me to put my St. Mary's Axe Tower. So I can grab this tower and this window. I'm going to, I can't see my arrow that I want to click on. Let's see if it lets me click on it. Okay, I was able to click on it. I can drag it this way and I can drag it down here. And I can put it in my scene right about here. Now, 
I don't want it on top of these buildings. Okay. So I can just take these buildings and slide those. I'm going to turn my snaps off so that they're not really in the way here. And let's just highlight. I'm going to drag and draw a box around these buildings here and slide those back just so they're not on top of each other. Looks like we're covering up this last building. Let's slide that out of the way. Okay. How does this look in my perspective view? Let's open this up, maximize our viewport. And now we have, uh, I'm going to hit play for my animation. I have my ball come down, roll off the scene and stop. So um, I'm going to, now that I have those into my scene, I'm going to find an amicable angle here, something that I like. It looks kind of cool. And maybe zoom in a tiny bit more here. I want to be able to see my building, show those off so it doesn't look like just a couple boxes here. And let's render this as a preview. First thing off we want to do, remember, save, save often. So go up to File, Save. Before we do anything, every time you render, you have the potential that it's going to crash your program. Now, we're going to do this as an AVI. So I'm going to go to my preview. We're going to create a preview in this perspective. All right, we're in perspective here. We want it to be the whole time segment. That's okay. Um, we want to save it. So we have access to this, but we're going to change the name here. So we're going to go to output file. We're going to call this unit two assessment. It did not like me changing that. So um, let's go back here. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Document. Put it in my masterwork. Unit one assessment. We're going to change the name to unit two assessment. And we want it to be an AVI again. You keep the word preview on there. That's okay. And save. Keep it at high quality. Okay. And go down here. Make sure you're in perspective viewport and click create. It's going to start taking snapshots of my ball coming down. It's doing it one at a time going across the bottom. Okay, here's our scene. And still taking pictures. That has 100 to do. Once that's finished, it will be saved to my folder and I can upload that to my unit two assessment. I hope your buildings uh, turned out as good or even better than, than mine for this exercise. Looking forward to seeing what you turned in. Thanks for joining us in this video, and we will see you in the next one. Here it is. We have our one second, three second video. Um, keep modeling. Take care.